Hey everyone, Al Fragnoli, Legal Leaders, got a special guest joining us today, longtime NFL official, Carl Paganelli. Carl, thanks so much for coming on and taking time out of your day to talk with us. Thanks for having me, Al. Looking forward to picking your brain a little bit on some leadership stuff and um, some of your time in, in the NFL. So, um, Carl, as I mentioned, you've been a longtime NFL official, 20 plus years in the league. Talk to us a little bit about how you got involved in officiating, how you got your start, and how you moved up through the ranks. Well, my dad was a um, high school football official, college official, and when I was coming up um, through the through junior high and high school, uh, I was watching my dad ref. Uh, when I was younger, I was the ball boy, uh, kind of running out the bottle to tee and bringing it back, and went with my dad, and then. After I um, got done with high school, I played college football for a couple of years and I took a sports officiating class. I got registered in the state of Michigan. And after my games on Saturday, I would um, go do Catholic League uh, football on uh, Sunday. Uh, then after two years of football, I went to Michigan State and um, I did the intramural program. Uh, all that time, I was still registered with the state of Michigan, but I didn't do any high school or JV or any freshman games. I just did, um, you know, intramurals at Michigan State. It was great. It was the job that I did throughout the next two years and I got paid well and it was fun doing it. And my dad continues to do it. And um, my older brother, who also is an NFL rep, my younger brother also is an NFL rep. He was a little bit younger than us at that time, but my older brother continued after college doing the same thing and got into fishing. And I kind of just followed my dad's uh, footsteps and took a, took a five year uh, break from officiating. Okay, all right. You come from a long line of family that uh, are football officials, so that's fantastic. I love your journey. Um, thanks so much, Carl, for sharing that. Obviously, uh, officials throughout the country, we know that there's a shortage, there's a crisis from the youth level all the way up to um, high school, varsity sports, college, NFL. There is a shortage of officials. Um, what advice do you have for those that want to get involved and be an official, maybe move through the ranks as well? What kind of advice do you have to a younger person that wants to get started? Well, I just had a uh, statistic uh, given to me last uh, week by the NFL, and they've been following closely, not only youth football, but youth officiating. And they had said that in the last uh, two or three years, they've lost 55,000 registered state officials not all football um, throughout the United States. And the number one reason why people were dropping out of officiating, it wasn't so much the coaches, it was the fans. And the fan behavior is what is deterring people. But there's an opportunity, you know, you can get registered in high school. If you're a high school student, you can do, you know, JV games, seventh and eighth grade games. You can do elementary games. There's so much opportunity because they're looking for people to officiate. You know, you start small, you continue to work and put the passion and the dedication and you eventually will hopefully work your way up to, um, you know, freshman JV games and hopefully maybe eventually a varsity schedule. And then from there, you know, it all depends how far you want to take it. If your aspiration is getting to college football or NFL, obviously there's a big commitment. You need to attend rules sessions. You obviously need to turn, you know, attend clinics and camps to kind of figure out mechanics. And the big thing really is, is that the door is wide open right now. You can get registered. Unfortunately, in one year, you'll be doing varsity football. When I came up, you had to have almost 50 ratings um, at the freshman JV level. So there's opportunities. The best place to start really was your local association. And, and you know, Michigan High School Athletic Association, um, it's a website that they have. You can get registered. You can take tests. Um, it's all available there, but probably the best thing is to find somebody who's already doing it. Let them be your mentor. The mentor will open the door for you. The mentor will show you the ropes, the insides and outs on how to get started. And they'll be there for you when, you know, you're not really sure what you're doing because the mechanics are different in every position. And most young officials doing basketball or baseball or, or football are working different positions they're not accustomed to. 
Yeah, that, absolutely. Thank you so much for sharing that detail, um, Carl. And and you mentioned there's tons of opportunities out there. You got me in, in contact last year, as we know, with with the right people here in Michigan. And it, it took about three weeks for me to get onto a, a varsity staff. So we know there's a shortage, there's a demand for it. Um, there's opportunities for people to get involved, give back to the sport um, and give back to to kids within the community as well. So thank you so much for uh, sharing that. Carl, one last topic that I want to touch on. Um, your, your wife had a long battle with cancer that she ultimately, unfortunately, lost. You've you have honored her legacy in the life that she lived by working on a couple charities. You've done some work with these charities and done some partnerships with the NFL. Talk a little bit about some of the work you've done to honor the life that your wife lived. Well, I, I realized that uh, obviously becoming an NFL football official, you know, just going back a little bit, it was a long journey. Um, I worked seven years um, in arena football, three years in NFL Europe. I worked the Canadian Football League. I worked Division Two, Three. Um, Mac, Big Ten. So yeah, I had a journey to get and a goal to get the NFL. But when I was doing all this, my wife was home with the young kids. Kathy was home. The commitment that she sacrificed allowed me to, you know, basically kind of achieve my uh, goal. Um, Kathy battled cancer for a little over four and a half years. And I ref that uh, for four and a half years. And quite frankly, the football didn't really mean as much to me at that time because my mind was always thinking I had to get out of this game. I got to get back home because I have maybe a CT scan or MRI or a doctor's appointment I needed to go to. And quite frankly, I had a really good seasons because there was no pressure. Uh, football is just a game. And I, people have to realize that unfortunately coaches and sometimes fans, it is the game. There's going to be a winner or a loser but it's not life or death. I went through that and I experienced that. So when Kathy passed, um, I got involved in hospice counseling really for me about a year later because my kids struggled. My two daughters really struggled trying to figure out the next path. Um, with that, it led me to seek um, counseling too. And during that time, made some great um, contacts with a hospice agency. So I donate Super Bowl tickets every other year to a hospice agency in which it's a great package and the winner gets to go to a Super Bowl. And with all of those tickets that I've donated with this hospice agency, they're naming the Bereavement Center um, in memory of Kathy, which obviously is a huge honor to me and the family and my, and my daughters that uh, we've made an impact. And we continue strong with that, that hospice agency. And it's something that I will always be involved in. And then there's another um, a, a 501C that um, we got involved. It's called Beautiful You by Profile Salon. What it is, it's a salon that um, gives services to females um, that are battling cancer. That, you know, ages doesn't matter. Um, and what they do is they, once a month, they give, you know, they give services, could be a pedicure, manicure, could be, you know, a haircut. Um, Kathy and her friend, unfortunately, also passed away, or like the second and third people that went, they were just starting, starting it out. And it became so important to Kathy because when she went to Beautiful You, she felt beautiful, even though her hair was, you know, losing and maybe she lost weight or maybe was, you know, gained weight for the chemotherapy. She always came home feeling beautiful. So we donate um, two tickets to that charity as well. And that comes from the NFL RA, um, our union, um, the charities committee. And that has been very successful. We've opened up um, a lot of doors for people and it continues strong today. Carl, that's, a, that's amazing. We know that was an incredibly challenging time in your life and in your daughter's life. So thank you for sharing that. Um, you've done amazing work to find ways to to give back to people within the community that are continuing to struggle with with family members that are battling cancer. So um, thank you for sharing that. Thanks for your incredible leadership and the work you're doing out there. And and thank you for sharing some of your journey um, throughout officiating with our guests. As we talked about, we know that uh, it's critically important for people to get involved if they want to give back to their communities and, and officiate. So Thank you for sharing opportunities and suggestions and ways to get involved. Carl, we know you're busy. 
we know you got a golf course to get to real soon. So thanks for coming on and, uh, and uh, spending some time talking with us. Truly appreciate it. Well, thanks, Al. And like, like I said earlier, there is opportunities for young people. There's a lot of females that are right now. You see, we have females in the NFL. There's female in college. It's just not a, you know, a men's, uh, you know, occupation anymore. There's opportunities starting at a young age and, you know, sky's the limit if somebody's dedicated to want to do it. Um, I see it, unfortunately, as kind of a dying profession because of what's happening in the culture with some of the coaches and some of the fans. But we're trying to change that. We need to change how coaches and fans look at official. You know, like I said earlier, it's just a game, especially at the lower levels. It's a game. It's not the Super Bowl where a call could maybe cost somebody a Super Bowl. And we've got to change that because if we don't, we won't have any uh, football officials. We're already seeing now at some levels that teams are playing on Thursday nights in high school or Wednesday nights because they don't have enough officials to cover games. And it's sad, uh, but that's kind of what we've come down to. We've got to kind of hopefully move the needle in the right direction. Absolutely. I agree with you wholeheartedly there, Carl. I saw it firsthand last year. You mentioned games being postponed or, or played on different days. Varsity football is all about Friday night lights. And unfortunately, in the last couple of years, it has not been Friday nights where some of these varsity games are, are being played. So I encourage all the parents to sit back, enjoy their kids participating. And as you mentioned, Carl, at the end of the day, it is just a game. It is not life or death um, because we need officials to continue to come through the ranks. Again, Carl, thank you so much for taking time out of your day. We truly appreciate it. We'll talk to you soon. All right, Al, thanks. Have a great day. Absolutely, you too.